Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. And this is a little bit different, as you can tell. We are actually sitting on top of the Drone Up booth at UAV Expo. And as you can see, we can pretty much see the entire expo from up here. So thanks to our friends at Drone Up for letting us up here. And today we're going to talk a little bit differently than what we usually do, not in the office, not talking about just drone news in general. We're going to talk about what happened at UAV Expo. We walked around for the last couple of days and essentially we found a lot of new cool tech and then we wanted to share it with you guys. Last week we talked about new drones that actually were not a new drones. Uh, we got the Osmo Mobile 5 that was released today from DJI. So not something that we saw here on the field, but we saw a lot of different things. I'm going to start with what we saw on Tuesday when we uh, arrived in Vegas. Uh, there was a, a bunch of drones flying at the flying field. And uh, the first one was actually a, it was Skyfront. They were flying a hybrid drone, and that drone can fly for 13 hours. 13 hours on the combo of gasoline and electric. Uh, they were able to, uh, to do a demo, and uh, kind of impressive. You can see the footage playing in the background right now. We also look at a very, very large VTOL, VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing, called uh, Camaris. Actually, their booth is uh, right behind me right here. And uh, Camaris has, again, a very large and interesting design. We saw them flying around. Uh, they had a crew of two people to uh, man the aircraft and, uh, and get it up in the air. So that was really cool. Um, we came back. It was starting to get a little bit hot. This is Vegas in uh, almost the end of summer. And then we talked to our friends at Aloft. And um, Aloft has uh, something really exciting coming up. Coming up. Not Remote ID, because we know Remote ID is not here yet, but something very similar to Remote ID, where Aloft wants you to be able to share where you're going to fly. Now, you may say, well, is that really necessary? So you'll be able to basically share the area where you're going to be flying, which is, which is novel. This is a novel idea. This is to increase safety. You basically want people to know that somebody else is flying in the area, therefore they should be looking for you and then help to deconflict the airspace. This is by no means a way to actually block the airspace. This is just a way to tell other people that you're going to be flying. Think about it as remote ID, except it's anonymous. You're basically just telling them not where the drone is going to be, but the area in which you're going to be flying. So we're excited that uh, they share that information with us. And, uh, and hopefully we can actually get to their booth and get some more information uh, on this. The next area that we talked to was our friend at Skybras, Skybras and Bobby. And the software Skybras is available on Hotel Drone. So Hotel is also located right here with a beautiful booth where we uh, looked at Skybras. We also looked at the new enterprise Evo, uh, Evo 2 that they have. And uh, we spent some time with John McBride talking about this. So here's a little bit of the clip that we recorded with John McBride talking about the new Hotel uh, enterprise. Well, just a little bit about the Evo 2 line in general. So the Evo 2 has done a great job getting out there into the market, kind of getting the people kind of understanding a little bit more about the, the orange, you know, Autel brand. So overall, you, know, you just go a little bit farther back and they've done a great job with this. Um, but the improvements we're talking about are just trying to kind of correlate with what a lot of the enterprise, uh, you know, customers type want. What do they want? Well, they, they want a little bit more than just the standard you know, it's a drone, it flies around in capability. So Enterprise was brought online, especially with the accessories that we have and showing the smart controller. So, I mean, just talking about the airframe, all kinds of things. So we'll, we'll talk about it here just for a second. The airframe itself, you know, we still have obstacle avoidance up on the front, carbon fiber arms that just, and a little bit longer than the original design, a little bit larger stator here. So the motor is running a lower RPM on the same size battery. So we're still, so what we're able to do is keep the, the noise a little bit more down with a larger prop and a little bit lower RPM on the on the motors. So let's talk about the accessories real quick. Oh, and payloads. Three different cameras. So as these come in combination, we've got the 640T, the Dual R, which is the Boson uh, FLIR, and then the, the Pro, which is the 6K 20 megapixel uh, one inch sensor. So that's what we've got going on with those three different packages or bundles. All the bundles will come with smart controller. Smart controller is a new new one, man. I mean, this thing's fantastic. I don't is this have a you. V2? It is a V2. So now we're all just V2s moving forward. So let's talk a little bit about the accessories. It's again, it's a need for the overall purpose of, of doing a little bit more enterprise side. A speaker to inform people, really important. And as I was said in an earlier presentation, uh, Kenny Loggins, Danger Zone sounds pretty good at 1,500 feet away. 
I'm just saying. Yeah. So there's that spotlight. Everybody likes a bright spotlight on their drone, especially at night. So any night operations. And even though I, it's a love-hate, even with the other company, this guy, um, it's a love-hate because I, I want to see the next version come out with this integrated already. And I hope that I hope that happens, you know, in the near future. But the last accessory that you buy separately is the RTK. RTK is not position holding. RTK is actually geo stamping on the imagery. So you do have to have a subscription base to some kind of a VRS or N-Trip or anything like that. Um, probably the last feature on here to talk about is the ADS-B. Okay. So it does have ADS-B in. We're capable of receiving that. That'll show up in the UI just like any other competitor type to where it shows up on the screen allowing you to, to kind of make decisions. Well, Don. Thanks again, and uh, in touch. <laughs> it's always a pleasure having talking to you, man. So appreciate it. The next thing that's happening tonight is Skybras is actually going to go against Pix4D in the capture competition. So they will be outside right here uh, in the Vegas airspace, actually, flying a mapping mission. And then we'll see actually who's going to win. The idea is to see which one is the easiest software to use and which one gets the best result. We also went and talked to a company right around the corner right here called Vayu, and Vayu has two different types of drone, one with a two-hour battery, so this was, they told us that the inside of the drone in itself is basically loaded with batteries. This thing can fly for two hours, uh, carry a pretty heavy payload. They also had a eVTOL, 10-hour battery, 10 hours of battery on this eVTOL, um, has the ability to take off and then switch into a, uh, a forward flight, and I think this was a, not an electric mo a motor in this case, this was a, a gas motor uh, going forward. Uh, we saw our friend Mark at Extreme Aerial Production. Mark is uh, a local to our area and uh, does a lot of work in our area. Uh, great guy, and then he actually showed us his unique. Now, you, we don't hear about unique a whole lot. They have an HS20E. The drone is a hexcopter uh, with basically six motors and uh, has an RTK module on top of it, so uh, more precision. Mark does a lot of mapping, so he uses Unique for that. And so we hope eventually to get our hands on one of those and, and test it for you guys so you can see what Unique has been up to. Uh, we looked at a, a delivery drone, a large delivery drone. This is uh, Air Logics. I think they were out of the Ukraine. And uh, this drone can fly for 60 miles for a full hour at 60 miles an hour and deliver up to 45 pounds of, uh, of packages. And as you can see on the images here, this is, again, a large drone. EV tall. It has four different motors to get up in the air vertically, and then it can switch to a two motor moving forward and, uh, and fly for, like I said, for an hour at 60 miles an hour. A lot of different applications to deliver things kind of in the remote areas. Uh, they do a lot of work outside of the United States, but hopefully we can see some of these uh, in the United States as well. So as you can see, very busy. If you look all the way around, there's just people talking. It's probably a little bit loud right now, but a uh, ton of different uh, people exposing, which is really, really cool. Uh, to see, especially coming out of uh, a year and a half of not being able to do this. So uh, we met with a lot of our friends. We had a, a really great time here. Uh, really excited to see some of the pictures in the background here. Uh, we met a lot of you guys that we see online that are either students or watching us on a weekly basis. So thank you for stopping by and saying hi when you see us and fist bump and, uh, and just recognizing us. So that was uh, really exciting. So next week, don't forget, it is Drone Safety Awareness Week with the FAA. And we're actually going to be hosting an event every single day Day. On Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we are uh, hosting Drones After Dark with the FA. They're going to have a panel of people come to our YouTube channel. You'll be able to see all of the information uh, posted in, uh, in on, on our YouTube page. It starts at 9 p.m. Eastern every day, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And on Thursday, they have a race with multi-GP. They're going to be doing a live race, a live FPV race on our channel. Uh, so all the information you can find in here, uh, we'll put some link down in the video description as well. And then on Friday to close up the week, uh, Drone Safety Awareness Week, we're going to be spending some time with our friends at Drone Responders. And we're going to talk, be talking about uh, NIST training and why you should be using NIST for public safety. So this is a public safety event that we're going to have on, uh, on Friday, and that's at 4 p.m. our time, which is 7 p.m. Eastern. So we'll see you guys there. And uh, in the meantime, that's all I have for you this week. So we'll see you guys next week.